everybody, this is Dada Yai and I call myself the Genuine Scholar. Why? Because everything I do, I try to do it from the heart. I want to welcome y'all to another episode of I Want Self TV. Now, we are in part two of what I call PhD You Can Be. And today's theme is if you can learn, you can earn. And so I had somebody last week who wrote me and said that they disagreed with my statement that most people can achieve a PhD. And so, you know, I'm glad they wrote that, um, definitely because I feel like, you know, it creates great dialogue and I feel like everybody has their own opinion. And it's okay for you to have that opinion um, based off of your experiences. Um, and based off my experiences, I actually believe that most people, not everybody, I mean, you have some people who have some learning disabilities that's gonna definitely create major, major, major challenges. But the truth is, when I look at just college campuses in general, a lot of the reasons why a lot of people don't succeed is because they don't want to put in the work to achieve. And so when I say if you can learn, you can earn, what I mean is, let me let me give my story just a little bit, just a quick snippet, is the fact that when I graduated from undergrad, I had a 2.9 GPA, which is not ideal, especially when talking about going to graduate school. I went to graduate school, hold on, let's back up. I made an 800 on my GRE, which is like the bottom of the barrel of GRE scores. Um, went to my master's program, I did decently. Um, but I didn't do the greatest in my master's program. I mean, I graduated with a decent GPA, but when it came time for a PhD, I still used the same GRE scores, got in on conditional admit. I, was, I wasn't the greatest writer. Um, my professors even up front told me that I'm gonna have some challenges in terms of writing. And so I eventually, I did what it took to get through the program. And so what I wanna say is a lot of people are intimidated by PhD programs because of the writing aspect. If you can get, finish a master's degree, the coursework of a PhD is not gonna be too much different. I mean, it's gonna be kinda similar. Um, but then when you get to that writing aspect, when you have to write a dissertation, a lot of people are intimidated by the dissertation process. And I'm going to do a video on the dissertation process because it's not you sitting down and just writing about one topic. It's broken down into different parts. And each part you devote um, a certain amount of time to them. Plus, they are broken down into like your introduction, your literature review, um, your methodology, your findings and results, your discussion. And so it's not you just trying to think of all these things and how can you know I think a lot of people equate it to writing in class when you have to write on a topic and they they're like how do you write a hundred plus pages on one single topic and so I break that down for you later on but the thing is a lot of people are afraid because they're not strong writers I wasn't a strong writer but here's the thing when I say if you can learn you can earn writing is what we call a skill and so a skill can be learned. You can learn how to write. I didn't know how to write. Um, when I left high school, I wasn't a great writer. When I went to undergrad, let's be realistic about what happens in undergrad. In undergrad, the English courses I took was more about reading and then you wrote a paper based off of what you read, but they didn't really teach you grammar. Um, in, in, in college, I guess they assume you should automatically have that from high school. So if you didn't get that in high school, and or if you didn't learn it in high school, some people don't learn it, some people didn't get it, and then you go to college and you didn't get it in college, where do you expect to get it from? So what I personally had to do, I had to learn how to write. So I had to go to a writing center. I had to go and get my paper proofread. Not only did I get it proofread, I actually had them make comments so I can actually look at the proofread version and I can look at my original version and I can compare the two. So I had to learn how to write. I had to learn how to make the subject and verb agree. I had to learn all of these things. Um, when it comes to um, research writing, it's a certain way it's done. You have to learn APA. I mean, if you're going into a PhD program, you have to learn APA. So you just don't go on and log on to the internet and go to an APA website and just automatically assume that's APA and that's the way it's supposed to be. No, you get the APA manual and you sit down and you learn the manual. You learn how to write in APA. And so when when I say if, if you have the ability to learn, you have the ability to earn, that's saying that you have to take an effort. You have to put the effort behind um, you learning what it takes to progress through a PhD program. And so it's not going to be given to you. No. And so a lot of people fail out because they are not willing to do the work. And then another thing you must have is persistence through these programs because a lot of people quit because it's a lot of work. See, it's not that the work is hard. It's a lot of work. You may have 
four papers that are 20 plus pages that are due at the same time you're trying to do a project. And so a lot of people quit. I don't want to do all the work. And so it's not that people are not capable of doing it. It's that some people just don't want to do the work to complete these degrees. And so I don't want you to feel like you have to be a certain level of smart because I see people who had valedictorians who were valedictorians, people who had 4.0 GPAs who could not make it through a PhD program. It's not because they couldn't learn the material. It was more so because they didn't want to do the work that it took to succeed in a PhD program. But then you had somebody who wasn't as smart, who wasn't great in math, who wasn't great in English, but then they did the work that it took to make sure that they made it through the program. When you write your dissertation, you have support. I mean, of course, it's your works, but then you have editors who can edit your works. You have people who can support you along the way. You have a dissertation chair who's going to support you in your writings. And so it's not you just being out there by yourself. And I think a lot of people think you have to just write this dissertation 100% by yourself. No, your chair will read it, they'll send it back to you, tell you some things you need to work on, some areas you need to strengthen it up, some areas that are very weak, you know, they're going to let you know the truth. You have a committee that when you go up in front of them and you turn in that proposal, and your proposal is your first three chapters of your dissertation, we'll talk about that later, but then they'll, they'll break it down for you and tell you, you need to work on this. So it's not always about just being smart, but you have to learn how to utilize resources to be successful through a PhD program. And that's why I feel like most people could, could is the, is the key word, could make it through a PhD program if they really wanted to, but it takes work. And it's not something that, like I said, is given to you. And so um, this is just another motivational video to say, you know, you can do it if you want it. If it's in your heart, go after it. I mean, it's not for everybody. It's not something that everybody needs. But if it's in your heart, go after it. Don't let, you know, your lack of knowledge about it be the reason that you don't make it. Because you can do your research. Um, you can ask me questions. And there are tons of individuals that you can reach out to that can help you along the process um, of attaining a PhD. Because once you get it, then you can be an inspiration to somebody else who doesn't know much about the process. And so I hope this video helped you share it with other people. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Um, but thank y'all for the love. Thank y'all for the support. God bless you. And I'll see all of y'all being doctors one day. Have a good one.